Welcome to Reading the Word with Luther for March 25th. I'd like to read to you today from the Revised Standard Version of the Holy Bible, Psalm 32, the first uh, five verses. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I declared not my sin, my body wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to thee, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then thou didst forgive the guilt of my sin. This is the word of God. Luther writes about the last half of that last verse I read. I will confess my transgressions forgave us the iniquity of my sin. The first kind of confession is that which is made to God and teaches us that we are all alike wicked sinners. If anyone have special grace, let him thank God and refrain from boasting. Has anyone fallen into sin? It is because of his flesh and blood. Nor has any fallen so low that another who now stands may fall even lower. This kind of confession is so highly necessary that it dare not cease for a moment but must constitute the entire life of a Christian, so that without ceasing he praises the grace of God and reproaches his own life in God's presence. The second confession is that made to our neighbor, and is called the confession springing from love, as the former is called confession springing from faith. Of this confession we read, Confess your faults one to another. This kind of confession, like the former, is necessary and commanded, for God will be merciful to no one, nor forgive his sins, unless he also forgives his neighbor. Besides, faith cannot be true unless it produces this fruit, that you forgive your neighbor and that you ask for forgiveness. Otherwise, a man dare not appear before God. If this fruit is absent, faith and the first kind of confession are not honest. The third kind of confession is that ordered by the Pope, which is privately spoken into the ears of the priest when sins are enumerated. This confession is not commanded of God. The Pope has forced the people to it, and consciences have been troubled and tortured in a manner that is pitiful and distressing. Hence we say of private confession that no one is compelled to observe it. Still, it is a commendable and good thing. When you go to private confession, do not give heed so much to what you do as to what the minister says, that in God's stead he proclaims to you the forgiveness of sins. The word which he speaks is not this, but God's word, and God will keep it surely as if he had spoken it himself. This is the way God has placed his word into every corner of the world. Therefore, you ought not to despise it, but receive it with heartfelt desire in true faith. So, when you make confession, for example, when we come together to worship, or when you make even inward confession in your own prayers to God, or when you confess your sins uh, to your pastor or to even a brother or sister in Christ, uh, don't rely on what you do. Don't rely upon the confession. Uh, don't rely upon um, it as something that garners you uh, any favor with God or is a... The confession is not what is effectual. It's what comes after the confession that makes the difference. It is hearing the words that in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, you are forgiven of all your sins. That is what is effective. That is what makes the difference. That is what we must depend upon. The word of forgiveness, not our act of confession. Let us pray. They say, Lord, that confession is good for the soul. That's what they say. May we say that your forgiveness is good for the soul. For the sake of Christ. Amen. Thanks for joining me today for reading the word with Luther. I hope you'll be back with me again tomorrow.